Good evening, good evening, everybody. I hope all of you had a blessed day today. I wanted to get on here real quick tonight and share with all of you my experience today when I visited my youngest Amish sister. Uh, she was only two weeks old when I left the Amish, when I turned 18, and she had just been born two weeks old. She didn't really uh, watch me growing up, and I didn't watch her growing up, but... Uh, she was uh, obviously at home. I saw her when she was a little child, and as she was growing up, every every so often I would pop in with my Amish clothing on to visit my uh, Amish mother because that was the rule. I had to wear Amish clothing to visit her, and I'm welcome to visit as long as I have those Amish clothing on and park my vehicle next door. And I always followed those rules in order to visit my mother and my family, so I always saw my little sister, Wilma, she was the youngest one, only two weeks old when I left, but I saw as she was growing up, you know, and, and then she uh, got married uh, probably about a year and a half to two years ago. She got married, and uh, now she wrote a letter to my youngest brother, Melvin Yoder, that left the Amish and is now a police officer. Um, he had received a letter that he shared with me. Uh, she had put in there that she doesn't want her children to see us brothers, her brothers, in, in dress the way we are, you know. And, and in the letter, it, it specifically stated that even if we wear Amish clothing like we did at mom's to visit, that we still would not be welcome. And uh, when my brother shared that with me, knowing me, I'm going to go find out. <laughs> I'm going to go find out. I'm going to... Oh, I guess uh, put your money where your mouth is. If you said that in a letter, I'm going to come find out. I want to hear it from you face to face. Kind of similar where my mother, she had told my brother, I, why do they always tell him first? I, I'm not sure what's up with that. They don't have the nerve to tell me or something right away. <laughs> but, uh, well, they know how I come. I, I know the Bible. I got the Bible right here. I can use the Bible against any religious cult. So anyway, uh, my mother obviously had told my brother first about we can't come to her funeral when she dies. And that very same day, I made a trip and I, I went out there and I asked her and made her tell me face to face. That's how I treated this today. Uh, I, w I did not have to work. It's very slow. So my company told me to stay home. So I used that opportunity today to go out and visit my uh, Amish sister. Now, um, to see if it's true, you know, with, with what my brother shared with me in the letter. Now, I did not know where she lives. I just know that that is a very large Amish community. And I knew that if I pull into just about any Amish home, uh, you know, I've been out long enough, they, they don't recognize me. And the first Amish home I pulled into, I just asked where Wilma Yoder lives. She had been married, and I believe his name is Samuel Bontrager. And, of course, the Amish lady at the door immediately said, yes, yeah, it's, it's on over. She wasn't sure what road, but she told me kind of where to go. So I went that direction maybe about four or five more miles, and then I uh, got to another Amish farm, and I went into that Amish farm and asked if they know where Wilma Yoder lives and her husband, Samuel Bontrager. And it just so happens that was Samuel Sr., <laughs> and, and I asked him where they live at, uh, Samuel Jr., and he told me about three miles, turn left, and then there's an English home that they had bought and converted it over to an Amish home, taking the electricity out and all that, making an Amish home out of it. So that's where I went, and sure enough, who's at the door? My sister Wilma. Now, her husband wasn't at home, but I recognized her right away, and she recognized me right away. So she opened the door, and right away I knew that what the letter said that my brother got was true, because she would not let me in the house. And I said, uh, everything all right? Okay to come in? No, no, I, I'll, I'll talk to you here at the door. I said, okay. And she was barefooted. It was cold. She's standing there barefooted, you know. And, and I said, now, I'm your brother, and I'm here to have a face-to-face -face conversation today. And she kind of looked at me. I said, well, I understand that you wrote my brother a letter. I never got one. But I uh, know that you got married here, and you, you got your little baby there, and she was holding a little baby in, her, in her, her arms. And I said, now, you got a family of your own, and I understand that you had written a letter to my brother saying that um, 
me and him could never come out, and you never want your children to see me and him living a non-Amish life, life, you know, you don't want to have to explain that to them. And she said, yes, that's true. I said, why is that? And she said, well, I, uh, I don't want to have to explain to my children why you guys are the way you are. If you come Amish and you follow all the rules and get baptized and live the Amish life, then we love you and you are welcome to come into our home and visit. But standing, you know, I, I didn't have no, I didn't have no Amish clothing on today when I visited her. So she said, obviously, you know, you're not welcome in my home. I said, okay, I, I appreciate, and I was, I'm smiling, you know, I'm just, I'm not letting it get to me. I just said, well, I appreciate your honesty. And, and what I heard about the letter that you wrote is obviously true because you're not allowing me to come into your house today. Uh, but I appreciate you standing here and telling me the truth, how you feel. And uh, I said, now I, I got a question for you. And she said, yeah. I said, now, if any Amish people want really badly for the former Amish to come back home to be Amish, what do you think works best? Do you think welcoming and loving someone and welcoming, welcoming them in, in and, and offering a cup of coffee and maybe a meal, do you think that kind of love would work better to get somebody back to be Amish again? Or rejecting them and saying, you can't come in my house. Which one do you think would work better? Well, well, she didn't want to answer that. And she said, well, I, we were just honoring our forefathers. And in the New Testament, it says very well that you should honor your father and your mother. And she went, tried to act like she's going to the Bible. And I said, I know the Bible very well, ma'am. I said, uh, Ephesians 6, 1, honor your father and, and mother in the Lord. I said, it don't say honor your father and mother in the bishop, in religion, in Amish. No, 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 no. I said, in the Lord. So yeah, you can honor your father or your mother, but if they're not following the Lord, you got the right not to honor that. <laughs> I follow Jesus. And she, she didn't like hearing about that. And then I, I told her how I went up to Marlette, Michigan, me and my, my brother Melvin that are not Amish. And we were very much welcome with our sister Clara. And her and Clara are very close. And she said, yeah, but those Amish are more modern up there. They're, of course, going to allow you to come in and sit at the table and eat and all that. And I said, yeah, because if I ever wanted to come back Amish, I would go right there because they loved me. They allowed me to come in and sit at the table. We had a meal with them. They didn't shun us. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't think you know, we're right by being not Amish, but they still didn't tell us, oh, you can't come on the property. You can't come on the house because you're not Amish. They didn't do that. I said, so I looked at my sister today and I said, that would be the community I would join if I ever wanted to come back Amish because they loved me. They welcomed me. I was tr See what I was doing? I was trying to make a point. I said, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just here to ask you if it was true, what was in the letter, and she absolutely admitted that it was true. And I, and I just told her, I said, so I'm not planning on coming back Amish. So as I turn around and I go to my vehicle here, I'm never going to see you again in this lifetime, according to your wish. She says, yeah, that's right. But if you come back Amish, you're, I said, I know that. I know that. But I said, I'm not coming back. And if I did, I certainly wouldn't come back in this cult. Oh, she kind of looked at me. I said, because you guys are not loving the former Amish. You're not accepting of us. You're saying we're going to hell. You're condemning us. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I said, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You're following the bishop. You're wanting to honor the wishes of, of my mother and, and her you know, grandpa, her dad, the bishop. And, uh, and I said, I just want you to know that you're even more brutal than our mother. Our mother makes me wear Amish clothing, but I can still visit. And now you're saying, even with Amish clothing on, me and my brother can't even come to this house. She goes, yeah. And I said, and then my mother said, I can, me and my brother that are not Amish can't even come to the funeral. I said, let me guess, you're not going to want me at your funeral too. She goes, well, that, if that's her wish, that's also my wish. I said, okay, I can grant you your wish. So I just wanted to get on here today, guys. I know I have explained a lot about my Amish upbringing, my Amish community on here. And uh, I, just want, I just felt like led, led to come on here and just share that experience today. Uh, I know a lot of Amish do not behave this way. But I can tell you that the Kenton, K-E-N-T-O-N, Ohio Amish, they are, they are a cult. They fit the definition of a cult. 
They are right, and you should never challenge them. If you challenge them, they will, they will hate you. They will excommunicate you. They are done with you. They believe there's no chance that you could ever make it into heaven. And I just, what really stands out to me is the love aspect of it. You know, that, that's right. Farm wife, this cult is so sad. Yeah, and they need our prayers. They, they really need our prayers because, guys, here, here, here's the truth right here. My sister, what she was spewing out of her mouth, does she know any better? No. That's all they know. The deception and brainwashing took place right here many, many moons ago. The religious power and control, guys, and the manipulation has been there for hundreds of years. They inherited this system, and that's all they know. The same self-righteous Pharisee spirit was here on earth 2,000 years ago coming up against Jesus and wanting to crucify him because he didn't do, him and his apostles didn't do as the Pharisees did. And therefore they crucified him and he's hanging on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And today when I came home, that's what I was praying. I said, Lord, I know she did. In her heart, she's not doing it because she feels that way. So, Father, please forgive her, for they know not what they do. She's doing in her heart, or, or she's not doing it by what she feels in her heart, but she's doing it to please mom and her husband that she just married. And then I asked her this key question. I said, is your husband by chance a preacher? She said, no. I said, okay, well, how about his dad? Is his dad a preacher? She said, yep. And I said, that makes a lot of sense. And as I smiled, she realized what I was thinking, that they are harsh like this, not to allow me in their home because she, the, the preachers have a great influence. The elders of the church have a great influence. And that is probably who she's listening to. And as I started pointing that out, that the preacher probably had a lot of influence, she said, oh, no, 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 that, that's how I feel in my heart. I just don't want my kids to see you guys being English and of the world and, and giving yourself over to the devil. I don't want them to see you like that. But if you're Amish, they can see you. And I'm thinking, that's not really coming from your heart. That is coming from the influence of my mom, grandpa the bishop, and now your father-in-law the bishop. So let's continue to pray for the religious Pharisee spirits that are among us here on earth today and just pray and ask the Father to reveal truth to them and then ask God to forgive them because they don't know any better. You all have a good evening. God bless you all.